Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Kent Christensen. I'm from Insight, a practice director um, at Insight, and we are at the NetApp Conference Insight. With me is Sanantha Rao, uh, Senior Director, Product Manager for NetApp, and has a lot of expertise on, on Keystone. And today, uh, welcome, Sanita. Thank you, Kent. Appreciate the time. Uh, we'd love to talk to you a little bit about how uh, Keystone, exciting offering from NetApp in the market, and how Insight's delivering that. Um, first, I think it's worth two minutes to explain just who is Insight, um, if you don't know. Um, it's a it's a broad um, operational organization that has supply chain capabilities, connected workforce for end unit devices, uh, tons of cool stuff around AI, IoT. But today we're talking about cloud and data center transformation, and Keystone fits dead center in the middle of that. Uh, Sanitha, you know you've been at NetApp for a while. I've been at Insight for a while. This is nothing new. We've always worked together on strategies that we think are going to really um, benefit our clients. Um, you know, from FlexPod through Flash to cloud, and we really appreciate the partnership around Keystone. Absolutely, Kent. I think uh, we've been in this together and we've seen a lot of success together. I think it's impressive that uh, now we are on a journey on enabling our customers to consume in a flexible model, which is uh, which is really, really uh, what the customers are looking at. Thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. Um, I think we both see this market really, really taking off, maybe faster than either of us predicted at the beginning of the year when we were uh, well into planning this journey. Um, I'm not going to read all the data on here. Um, if you want to, pause your, your video player. Um, the, the, thing, the, the data point that I like to point out is that at the end of 2019, Gartner came out with this concept that this consumption model, this as-a-service, pay-as-you-go model, they predicted that which is going to go from less than 1% in 2019 to 15% in the next 24 months. And I think um, when they started doing their COVID updates and, and changes in the market, they said that could, um, you know, probably double. Sinitha, what do you, what, you've had some insight on here as well. Yes, Kent, absolutely. I think I, I'll refer to the other analysts, which is uh, which is Gartner, and I think they have uh, also predicted a similar transformation strategy where customers are looking at new business models, especially because of three reasons. One, they're looking for improved business outcomes. Uh, they want to align their application and the infrastructure costs, and also look at reduced risk, which is, I think, uh, you know, same factors that you've alluded to. And they're also saying that they're going to look at 75% of the infrastructure moving into, uh, you know, these flexible consumption models in the next year or two, which is aligning with all the analysts talking about the shift. Um, maybe cloud is the reason for driving uh, this this uh, shift that that we are seeing together. Yeah, no, that's a perfect segue. Uh, a lot of times we're asked to under, you know, help educate the market, and this is probably an opportunity for a lot of people to say, "What is as a service?" Um, and we help them, you know, kind of align this. And this is just educational; it isn't specific to any product. Um, I think a lot of people that bought NetApp in the past were used to the capex model. Um, I buy it, I plan it, I design it, I buy it. <clears throat> it shows up. Hopefully, somebody like Insight is helping support it for me and implement it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm responsible for it. I maintain it. Um, I, I uh, make sure that it's um, meeting my needs, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of your CapEx model. There was an OpEx model called a lease, and we've seen it um, really just fall off a cliff since FASB came in and said, look, a lease is just delaying payment, but the same obligations of CapEx. You own it, you know. Um, et cetera. It goes on your books as a liability and et cetera. So we've seen that fall off. Now, NetApp has a lot of solutions that are um, actually cloud native, if you would, um, cloud volumes, cloud volumes on tap, et cetera. And cloud consumption is got um, on the other extreme, which is I don't have to plan for it. Um, yeah. I don't have to have that initial outlay. I have a lot of flexibility, um, especially in the ability to flex and get additional uh, capacity. Um, and what we see in cloud, especially for data, if you use it right for certain activities, it's very efficient because I don't have to plan and commit, et cetera. Uh, however, in data, if you use it wrong, it can be significantly expensive. Um, so um, as a service is somewhere kind of uh, bridging that gap where it's, you know, you're not going to have the big outlay up front. You don't have to plan for the next four years. Um, it's got flexibility. 
And again, in a, many of the models that we see with our clients, um, it fits into their business model extremely well. Absolutely. And well put, Kent. This is the journey that the transition that we've discussed in the previous slide, which talks about moving, right? Perfect. So we do see some of the clients. Why, why, do, why do clients want this? And we've, we've got a lot of uh, engagements together on this, uh, Sumitha. Some of them are saying, I'm under stress and I want to um, conserve my capital. Um, that's actually not the number one or two reason that we see. Um, the biggest ones we're seeing is I've got a cloud strategy that I need to execute and therefore I have uncertainty as to what percentage of my data is going to be on premises or in cloud. Mm -hmm. And so there's risk in doing a CapEx purchase on premise, given that I don't know what will be in cloud over X amount of 12, you know, 24, 36 months. I'm, I'm really glad that we are seeing a similar customer input both on our end and your end as well, which is, you know, the bridge to the cloud clearly becomes one of the key differentiators on why Keystone has is, is actually created the momentum that we are seeing uh, together um, for the last, you know, um, a year or so that we've been working on, on Keystone. Exactly. Now, interestingly, there are some people that, and, and there are a few out there that aren't really worried about the cloud impact. They just have sure. uncertainty in their business, whether it's a, you know, we're going to talk about a, a federal organization that says, I'm not intending to put this in public cloud, but I have uncertainty in my budgets or I have uncertainty in my business plan. And it reduces the fact that you have to have a four year plan to amortize a CapEx purchase versus essentially saying, I've got a strategy. Um, I had one client that, um, looked at this and one of his comments was i am tired of planning and buying things i just want to run my business and have the, the infrastructure flex with it um, i thought that was well stated absolutely well stated so um i think we just discussed netapp you know if you've been uh, watching the insight and and we recorded this prior but i imagine the word data fabric came up and and that implies that netapp has got a common data management strategy across public cloud with things like cloud volumes and cloud on tap um across private cloud and we're going to talk a little bit more and drill in on a keystone or even hybrid you know we're working with some large clients that are saying look i want to use uh, public cloud compute, but I want to use uh, NetApp data services, maybe not in the public cloud, which is an option, but next to the cloud and something like Equinix. So I'm going to transition it over to Sunitha uh, because ultimately NetApp Keystone was the ability to say, well, those public cloud capabilities and consumption models are awesome. How do I do that on premise? Um, so Thank you. Sunitha, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Thank you, Kent. I think uh, I'll just put in a, a little uh, statement before I get into the details of Keystone. I think we are well positioned being a differentiator in terms of our cloud connected capability that clearly stands out, especially for those customers who want an on-prem halfway through or right in the public cloud. You, you can enable all the three choices and especially partnering with you will give us the opportunity to enable all of those use cases seamlessly. Right yep. now with Keystone Flex subscription, interestingly, the big differentiator that we are seeing in the market today, which is uh, which is what you have alluded to in the past, is the ability to look at all of the portfolio under the Keystone Flex subscription. It's extremely simple. You pay by tiers like the way you do it, whether in a Microsoft Azure or a Google Cloud environment, and then you're going to subscribe to that service tier pay based on your your, your uh, subscription, whether you want uh, an analytics workload or a VDI workload or a file share workload, you can actually transition between each one of those, those tiers that you're seeing on this slide. Yeah, I um, love this because it really is saying, well, so you're gonna go one of the clouds and you're gonna have the option of a standard premium or, or uh, exactly. extreme service. And with Keystone, you have its exact parallel. Now Absolutely. you can do your planning. Absolutely, and it's seamless across all the clouds. Now, with um, you know the existing service that we've discussed previously, we have now integrated Extreme with our auto tiering solution, where the customers don't have to bother about looking at you know adding an additional object tier for their offering. That's number one. The second and the most important aspect of this entire offering is you can consume the whole portfolio. You can look at object with storage grid. You can look at block with E and EF series and also consume on tap and uh, your flash portfolio alongside by expanding the end to end uh, usability for the various use cases that, that you would want to standardize Keystone on. 
This is absolutely differentiating. I spend a lot of time on the front lines in front of clients and they may have gotten an idea of a consumption service because I think pretty much at this point, everybody in the planet's saying, I want to have a consumption service, whether it's a good one or not. And Keystone is absolutely a good one. Um, but at the, at the point where you say, OK, I've got some primary storage, let's call it premium. Um, but what do I do for data backup and how do I archive and, and how do I fit that in the cloud? At this point, there is no parallel. I mean, the data fabric is unmatched. And and this is why I think Keystone aligns to our clients' uh, needs. Absolutely. And I think with the extreme data tiering, you can get that option as well. Now, um, I don't want to spend a lot of time because the base package, you will get all the services that you've seen in the previous slide. I would stress on the new add-on services that we are launching. We will be launching Metro Cluster. I'm proud to say we already have a customer traction on, on the Metro Cluster service, which is which is very interesting. But you have a you know data protection basic and also some of the capabilities that you would get with the ONTAP, like Flex Walls and Flex Group, and cloning and encryption is automatically integrated into the service when you subscribe for the base service. Yeah, and, and data protection is perfect. If you have a primary site and a secondary site, you put that data protection on the primary, and it yep. replicates to the second. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's very easy to explain. Uh, we have a client uh, today that said, I don't think I need my second site. I'm going to do data protection to the cloud and leverage that as my second site. Um, and again, we just built hybrid. Yep, we did that. And you're going to hear more about my inside announcements. So thank you for the segue. I think uh, you know we have the FlexPay option, which is mostly to talk about the payment option, especially in uh, creative financing. Uh, we are now announcing FlexPod consumption model through the FlexPay channels, where you could look at a rental option. Uh, which is an interesting choice for those customers who really are not ready to move onto the subscription path, but would still like to consume on-prem in a flexible model. Yeah, no, so the Flex subscription is the core of what we're talking about with Keystone. Um, the Flex Pay, um, you know, as that program gets rolled out, that is an option. Um, one of the things that, that we'll kind of get to is, is Insight looks at this as kind of a... Um, a a recipe, if you would, um, at the core of it is I need data services, um, but I might need, um, you know, um, compute. Now, if it was Cisco compute, we're getting pretty close to a flex pod. And so we can either use the flex play model or we can use whatever program Cisco has. Um, if they actually said, for whatever reason, I want HPE compute, we could use the GreenLake program and we can start putting these things together. So. Uh, FlexPay may be the best way to do it, and we'll figure that out. Or we may just come up with um, multiple as a service models and, and put those together. Awesome. In case, I think uh, the Flex utility piece is, is coming back. We are talking about that uh, as a future for us. But the excitement for Flex subscription is still there, right? We're going to have a single orchestration that will allow you to manage your on-prem and cloud ass assets in one window. You could look at the cloud integrated offerings with data migration. And Kent, you pointed out that backup and tiering to the cloud has been one of the predominant use cases that you're seeing. Here you go. We, we're giving you this. And as a partner, as a valued partner, you can add add-on services and enable much more traction uh, together for some of those additional use cases that you can build out of it. Awesome. So with that, let's talk about a couple of examples. Um, we've got dozens of clients. And again, we weren't even doing this in February, talking to any of them. And all of a sudden, we've got you know many, many clients uh, already on board. It's a pretty exciting. Um, and these are two examples, and they're they're representative. Um, this one happens to be a financial organization, um, and quite frankly, like some organizations, they use NetApp for a certain area in their really really intensely uh, broad IT uh, services. Uh, they use NetApp for their file services. However, um, they had made a major commitment to both AWS and more recently Google. So that created uncertainty in their CapEx purchase model. And matter of fact, they said, we are not going to do any CapEx purchases that we have to amortize in their case four years. Uh, so they have uncertainty in their cloud model um, because they certainly don't understand what percentage of their over 5,000 workloads they're going to get to the cloud in 12, 24, 36 months. And there's great debate there. Um, so we said, well, how does NetApp Keystone work for you? Um, and they said, well, oh my gosh, this is exactly kind of what we do. And, um, you know, and what they've done is 
um, decided that everything they have on premise, they're going to roll into a Keystone model. Um, they're actually not going to wait for some of them to come do for refresh. They're just like, let's get this onto this model because that'll give me the flexibility. If I do get some of these things out to Google Cloud Volumes, um, I can essentially um, reduce my uh, Keystone consumption on-prem and increase my cloud volumes in Google, um, and we're helping them do that. So it ends up it's a perfect match. Um, as a result of aligning to their business model, they then said, what can you do for my um, traditional block environment, which was significantly larger because the block organization that they were using as an incumbent couldn't align to their business model. Um, and um, we're really sitting down, both teams, um, NetApp's cloud team, um, our joint teams, our uh, cloud um, you know, analysis team, where we help them understand their workloads, et cetera, all working together to help them meet their objective. Absolutely. And I think that's becoming a common theme. Don't you see that since we've started our journey together? I think that's becoming like the most common theme where customers are really, really looking at this integrated option where they can leverage the benefits of cloud and on-prem. Yes. I mean, that's a driving force for IT. If the company's made a major commitment to cloud, reality is they don't know exactly what and when, um, but this gives them the flexibility to take the risk out of it and say, okay, we're aligned. Uh, it's perfect. Um, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, um, there is a lot of organizations that even if cloud's not a factor, they don't have certainty in their business model. It could be, okay, it's time to size my IT environment for the next four years because I'm doing CapEx, which if anybody's got a four-year plan, I don't know who that is. Uh, it could be like any public organization, just read the news. They don't know what their budget is. Um, <laughs> they know it's good this year. Uh, it might not be as good. It might be larger, et cetera. So uh, in this case, they wanted to refresh. Um, they wanted to get on the latest flash technology. It didn't quite fit their budget, which opened the door to say, well, would Keystone fit? Um, and when they looked at it, they said, well, you know, it would be a little bit cheaper to buy, which is probably true. We're not saying Keystone replaces every purchase, because uh, if you do know what you want for four years, you might buy it. Uh, Keystone is an option to consume kind of a lot of the same technology. Um, but in their case, they said, well, this is a no-brainer. This is the exact fit to us. What's kind of amazing, if anybody's ever did, dealt with public uh, you know, agencies, federal agencies, et cetera, they actually went through the bid process, which is called RFQ, in less than four weeks, and we were awarded, and they um, awarded and executed the contract in weeks, which is kind of unheard of, because I think some people have spent lifetimes uh, selling to the federal government. Um, but it did create... Um, and uh, you know a plan that they're going to build on, and we're seeing dozens of public entities demanding services like this, consumption like this. Absolutely, I think it's it's the same across all industries. Awesome. Well, Sunita, I really want to thank you. Um, I, I you know I think one of the greatest parts of working together is we understand. You know, we've always kind of said we integrate NetApp's awesome technology into our solutions. And we've always worked very closely with NetApp to enable us to do that. So, um, you know, in this case, we talked a little bit about, you know, uh, one organization wants to combine Keystone with Google Cloud. Another organization wants to make a FlexPod or something like that and needs compute. Another organization is, is trying to figure out how to do, you know, enable a, a remote workforce, which requires VMware and some compute and, uh, you know, et cetera. And, and a lot of organizations are saying, well, how are you going to help me with ransomware and things like that? Um, and those are the types of solutions that we do. And we're helping our clients understand and meet a business objective. Um, and Keystone has been um, really helpful in giving us the flexibility to offer this. I'm so glad to see Keystone um, front and center of all the solutions that you're thinking through. And the partnership has been amazing, Kent. Really appreciate all your support and uh, the business that we do together. Awesome. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, for joining. And what we're going to do now is give you um, some links into places where you can go and get other information. So thank you once again, Sunita, and thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Kent. Thank you for the opportunity.